Uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, second and last talk for the day. Uh, today, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, shipping cloud native software in a CI CD pipeline. Uh, not really going to talk about how to pile up all the tools and automation in the world to uh, pile up more bugs, but rather uh, what are the different components um, and layers within the pipeline that you could actually impact security. Uh, so as myself, uh, Jack Menino, uh, I come from a place where people drive faster and use their horns, uh, the East Coast. Is that funny to anybody? No. Um, uh, I write a bit of Scala and I write a bit of Go these days. Um, obviously doing a lot of containerized work, uh, Go is a good kind of skill to have. Um, and those are my daughters who uh, take all my money. Uh, with regards to cloud native systems, um, a few things kind of up front. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we're generally talking about microservices, um, not monoliths. Uh, so modern uh, software and developer uh, systems have uh, pretty much codified these patterns in for us. Uh, we're working in containers. Uh, so even if we're working on services like uh, Fargate uh, or things like Azure Container Instances, we're using a serverless pattern for containers. Uh, we're still using containers at that point. Uh, we're typically running things on uh, orchestration systems, so in case anyone hasn't been paying attention for the past couple years, uh, Kubernetes has won that battle um, at the orchestration layer. Uh, so all of our systems are going to be running orchestration layers that we also have to secure as well. Uh, we want to have as much telemetry uh, and health porting as possible. Uh, we have a lot of different moving parts uh, and a lot more event-driven SDLC and, and pipeline than we've kind of encountered um, ship of monoliths and more traditional systems. Uh, everything's declarative, so um, we can just self-describe things, right? Uh, most architectures uh, can be rebuilt and deployed uh, these days from Git. Uh, and we live in a multi-compute, multi-cloud world. So uh, most organizations have their foot in at least one cloud, if not two. And um, systems like Jenkins X and Spinnaker uh, have taken these things into account, and so they've abstracted away uh, and, and opinionated a lot of the cloud and uh, can. Uh, container cluster uh, kind of patterns for us, right? Which can also be good and bad things. Um, and we'll take a look at uh, more today on how Jenkins X kind of implements these things. Uh, so here's an example of uh, a cloud native just kind of CI/CD pipeline. Uh, things we note is that we have a Kubernetes cluster. So what we're generally doing there is creating a namespace per environment. So we'll have one for staging, one for prod, uh, and then preview environments that we can spin up. Uh, so as we promote things between Git uh, branches. Uh, that can also manifest itself um, into the actual Kubernetes cluster itself. Uh, we have things like uh, container registries, which have, haven't been, they've been around for a while. Uh, we have things like Helm uh, and charts, right? So we have uh, another way to declare essentially what our containerized infrastructure, our pods look like, and we could deploy YAML uh, to a server and it magically spins up containers with a lot of stuff for us. Uh, that's another layer that we can also inject security as well. Um, but again, everything now is kind of going to a GitOps model in this regard uh, to where uh, we're, we're kind of controlling the gateway to everything uh, through repositories. Um, so some of the good things are that everything's event-driven these days. So everything has um, an API uh, and everything has webhooks. So if you think about working in Jenkins land, you're working a lot um, inside of the console. Um, if you're working in Jenkins X, uh, you're going to be working from APIs. So underneath the hood, uh, Jenkins X uh, just adds a bunch of different uh, custom uh, resources descriptions, uh, CRDs, uh, underneath the hood to Kubernetes so that uh, you can still interact with Jenkins X through Kubernetes APIs. Uh, so these things are really, really tightly coupled, and these systems are very cluster aware in themselves. And uh, what I mentioned about um, security and opinionation, uh, it ranges from uh, very opinionated to uh, what we'll see is kind of a total lack thereof, um, where systems, uh, as we deploy them to the cloud, um, are spun up with a lot of different best practices not in place. Uh, and Kubernetes is everywhere. Um, so taking a look at Jenkins X, uh, we can run a command uh, JX create cluster, uh, and we have a choice of a bunch of different um, uh, Kubernetes uh, providers. Um, so the common cloud providers, uh, we can also uh, push to our own um, on-prem managed. So when everyone hears cloud native, right, they think that it has to be deployed in the cloud. Um, that's not necessarily the case. It's just a really cool buzzword. It's software that's designed to be run in the cloud, but there's really no reason um, that you can't run a well-designed system um, on-prem, right? Uh, but nonetheless, um, when you spin up with JX create cluster, um, it's going to spin up uh, pretty much any of these for you. 
Uh, it'll spin up uh, a control plane. It'll spin up workers. Um, additionally, it'll spin up things like um, KMS, um, you know, different buckets depending on the uh, cloud provider and so forth. So um, where you can still hang yourself is things like IAM uh, and being really egregious at the cloud level um, because these things are going to propagate down to the cluster. And um, once we've gotten past the CID side, CD side, we're, we're inside of a cluster, uh, we have to think about how do we also isolate services from each other. Uh, so the API server uh, is the most important thing in Kubernetes. So uh, whether it's Jenkins X or, or anything else, Tecton pipelines uh, that are built to work with Kubernetes, um, they're still working through the API server for a lot of things. Uh, so most applications, uh, services can invoke the API. Um, if you overprivilege services, they can burn down the API. Uh, etcd is where all of our data is. So um, in managed services, you have less direct access to etcd. Um, in uh, your own uh, deployment, then you have to think about how do you also um, isolate, make sure you can't talk to etcd. Everything's managed through a controller, whether that's doing things like creating secrets to deploying, uh, creating new users. Uh, most things have a controller abstracted away. Uh, if we're using managed services, um, maybe less, but if we're writing our own uh, custom controllers, uh, these are things to think about as we test as well, where there may be some very non-standard behaviors in your pipeline. Uh, and once you get down to the container and the things you want to think about where you keep your developers kind of boxed in, uh, you want to keep them inside of the runtime um, as much as possible. Um, you don't want, uh, in a lot of cases, for attackers to move uh, laterally. Um, so things like segmentation uh, within namespaces are relatively flat. So uh, these are things you have to think about um, as you build test cases and things you verify on the way to production. Uh, in managed services, you have less service to hit some of these things, but uh, if you're running clusters, you definitely want to make sure that um, all the worker node stuff is, is really hardened as well. And if you're running on services like uh, you know, AWS, uh, you're still running EC2 nodes to run your workers as well. So things to consider. Uh, and you know, if you basically make every account super powerful, then they will own your API server. Uh, inside of a GitOps land, um, we pretty much uh, do everything through code, right? So um, whether that's pushing um, new configurations um, to deploying you know, total systems, uh, there are things that all happen through repositories. Uh, teams end up being mapped um, to Kubernetes namespaces. Um, and um, one of the nice things is that everything is very auditable um, via commits, right? Um, things you want to really focus on, though, uh, applying protection to branches. Um, not everybody should be able to push to master, and depending on uh, what other branches are uh, doing in that promotion process, um, you want to put some restrictions around those, too. Uh, so opinionated cloud and Kubernetes, um, or lack thereof, there's still a lot that's up to you. Uh, so secrets management varies, um, and you have different ways, whether you can use um, local secrets management um, in Jenkins X, or um, you can use the underlying cloud provider, which, uh, depending on if you're Azure, that's Key Vault. If you're on AWS, uh, that's KMS. Uh, some of those things will get up, set up for you, but um, you're still on your own to feed things like secrets into services. Uh, and additionally, with some of the development infrastructure that gets set up, you really want to kind of evaluate that. So does anybody use Helm in here in the day jobs? Um, so as you know, um, Helm 3 is really good, and Helm 2 uh, is a heaping pile of shit in terms of security, right? Um, can we all agree on that? Uh, Helm 3 is phenomenal. Um, so things like the Tiller, for example, right? So if you're using Jenkins X, um, that's going to be a globally deployed Tiller. So if you own the Tiller, um, you own a lot of stuff. So um, best practices with things like uh, Helm and the Tiller, um, you don't want to deploy it like that, right? So if you're using Jenkins X out of the box, um, you have to rethink stuff like that. Uh, services like EKS, um, this is also, if you spin up a Jenkins X cluster, you'll find um, certain types of logging are not enabled, um, API is public by default. Uh, this just mirrors, like, honestly, how AWS has that set up, so they've taken no opinionation, but nonetheless, if you're spinning up through Jenkins X, um, you have to consider some of these things. Uh, and things like S3 buckets, right, they're not doing anything egregiously wrong, but they're not doing anything additional um, to protect those buckets. And with regards to what we can get from testing, uh, there's a lot of good stuff that we can get before production. Um, I know there's been some good chaos talks and everything like that. Uh, those are things that obviously kind of push further to the production environment. Uh, but nonetheless, there's a lot of different things we can get, um, whether we're dealing with uh, the cloud, uh, our clusters, 
our containers, or our code. Uh, so the cloud ends up being another layer of abstraction um, around our cloud native layer, right? So um, in reality, we're spinning up um, underlying resources, we're exposing load balancers, we're integrating with IAM at the cloud level. Um, so some services like Azure um, and AKS and EKS have gotten really good at just integrating their identity directly down and injecting that into containers. Uh, so depending on what that container is privileged as, um, that gets compromised. Um, somebody can go burn down your cloud at that point. So um, you know things like least privilege still apply. Uh, we want to verify um, things like architectural correctness. Um, for example, if we're expecting something to be injected with um, uh, service mesh, uh, we're, we're expecting something to be hidden behind something. Uh, these might be things we'd want to be able to verify from a security perspective. Um, Low-hanging fruit and things we can figure out pretty quickly. We don't want to add time and latency. So there's going to be a certain amount of tolerance for what people want to see there. Uh, and validating different preconditions and, and things we'd expect to be in place before we push uh, maybe really sensitive code and data to a production environment. Um, our cloud and or uh, uh, excuse me, our container orchestration layer, uh, it's really tightly glued into the cloud in a lot of cases. Um, but really the nice thing there is that everything is very declarative, right? So we most of the time, uh, now you can obviously use other tools and you can spin that into code, um, but you're using often uh, YAML, really straightforward um, and easy to declare. Um, and uh, the reconcile pattern makes sure that uh, things are pushed pretty quickly to the production environment. Uh, we still have to focus on things like control plane hardening. So uh, taking uh, Jenkins X out of the gate, uh, not a lot of additional hardening for its control plane um, beyond what you might want to do on your own. Uh, Kubernetes has gotten a lot better in, you know, as it's evolved in newer versions, uh, but most um, managed services are still a few versions behind. I believe um, EKS is still on 1.14, for, uh, uh, so some of those things that you'll get in 15, 16, and you know, really recently 17, um, you're not getting yet. Uh, we have to think about access control everywhere, um, especially for us subjects, whether that's stuff that we're running in our pipelines to our you know, longer running, um, hopefully still immutable uh, containers as well. Uh, so if you drop stuff into like default and you don't assign it um, an actual subject, uh, then you're potentially sharing um, data uh, and those applications can attack each other at runtime. Uh, Jenkins X introduces a thing called environment uh, role bindings. Uh, and this just basically lets, uh, as you spin up these ephemeral namespaces, this just gives you an easy way to kind of map um, which privileges you have to those. So this is actually um, a CRD that Jenkins introduces on top of uh, Kubernetes in that regard. This is a Jenkins X specific thing. And we can use admission controllers to do a lot. Um, pod security policies let us mutate and do certain things um, and reject containers from being emitted. Um, OP, uh, open policy agent, OPA, uh, a little bit newer. Does anybody use OPA out of curiosity? Um, OPA is really cool and at some point it's going to be replacing um, pod security policy for Kubernetes. Uh, and they both let you do different things. OPA has a lot of its own complexities, but it comes with its own uh, API and, and, and it's everything. So you can do a lot of integration with OPA within your um, pipeline. Uh, arguably a little bit better than I think you could do with something like pod security policies. Uh, with containers, um, so the, the obvious stuff is um, harden your containers, don't have uh, known vulnerabilities, blah, 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 blah. That's, that's really nothing new here. Um, one of the things to recommend is deploying things by digest um, as opposed to using things like version tags. Um, and the reason is that somebody can overwrite um, container version um, 1.1, right? But if you're using um, whatever that digest is that you essentially um, deployed with, um, you can actually map those back to commits, which is a better way um, to make sure that the code you want to be running is associated with a specific version that you can push to production. Uh, code security in, in, in a lot of ways is kind of the same, right? We run the same pile of tools that we've paid for um, and stitched together through open source. Uh, what's nice about some of the modern uh, tools, especially Jenkins X, um, is you get things like preview environments and dev pods. Uh, so you can uh, integrate things like chat ops into your preview environments um, to do various things with um, different commands, right? So you can work um, inside of a pull request, you can comment on things, um, and you can trigger different commands. For example, Jenkins X um, has the scan command, so you can uh, do a bunch of different things from directly inside the cluster itself. Uh, so here's an example, um, really dirty, of just integrating a dependency check with it. Uh, so what you essentially do is um, you create a Kubernetes client, 
um, you create a batch job. Um, and then here you uh, essentially associate that with a namespace. Uh, and then here's um, what the command looks like. So pretty much you can run now JX scan um, and you can run something like dependency check and you can actually run those tools inside of a preview environment. Uh, but in reality, it's running all that work from the Kubernetes cluster itself um, as a job at that point. So uh, pretty nifty. Um, so to kind of wrap this up, because I know I'm running out of time here, uh, least privilege is really important. Um, as you can see, that kind of propagates from a bunch of different layers, um, from the cloud all the way down to the code that you run as well. Uh, you want to make sure that you enforce policies um, both within your pipeline, um, so you can fail things, you can kill stuff off, you can have time to fix things, but you also want to make sure that you have adequate controls um, and admission at runtime as well. Um, you want to be able to encrypt things everywhere. Um, there's really, most services you'll find have the ability to encrypt stuff that may be turned off in a lot of places um, by default underneath the hood. Um, you want to make it as easy as possible to consume and use secrets. Um, whatever tooling uh, and ways you ingest and let people use things, um, you don't want to make it impossible to get your secrets to work. And uh, logging and observability are, are definitely things that kind of get bolted on at the end. Um, but as you find, a lot of the tooling that you're going to spin up and use out of the box um, is going to be really weak on things like logging, um, and especially um, if you want to be able to observe things, well, there's, there's other tools and components that we add to our clusters and architecture as well. So in conclusion, uh, don't just pile up everything and assume it's a developer task. Um, in reality, there's a lot we could do um, further right in the SDLC as well, um, beyond just basically saying everything's a developer fault. Um, we want to enable people move, to move fast, um, but we also want things to be as self-correcting as possible, right? Uh, we don't want people you know, deploying directly to cloud infrastructure, right? We want them to go through different systems that are going to help catch things. Um, we want to be able to, you know, we don't want people just basically like CLI-ing and deploying stuff, right? We want them to go through um, Git. We want them to go through, uh, through things like Terraform. Uh, we want to put as many uh, controls in place to make sure that when it gets to production, it's, it looks good. And we want to make sure that we do things at the right point um, as opposed to trying to bolt security into everything. We can make it take forever to push um, a new deployment to production. So we want to make sure we don't just add stupid latency just to say we're doing more. Um, we want to make sure that we're ultimately putting our controls in the places that they actually make the most sense. Uh, and that's the end of my presentation, folks. So happy to take any questions. And if not, thank you very much.